Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Friday and happy start of March Madness. Since we are starting March Madness, I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a, a bracket of the top stocks to buy for 2021. And obviously this is all my opinion and not financial advice, but I decided to make a 32 uh, stock bracket. And I based it off of the first 28, I believe, were based off of market cap. And so I just went through tradingview.com, uh, just searched everything by market cap and put them in there. Uh, I left off some of the repetitive stuff uh, so I took like Visa on here, but I didn't take MasterCard. I think I only put one airline on here, but I put them into this little bracket and I'm just going to give a, a 30 second spiel about each one. And we're going to go through the bracket and I'm going to talk about my favorite stocks to buy and I'll put them up head to head. And so I'm very curious to see if you guys have any disagreements, but this is obviously just my opinion on the stock market. And today I'm going to be rocking the Oregon State uh, men's basketball jersey because they are playing Tennessee at around one o'clock today. Uh, and I do have them picked to win it all. So you heard it here first, the first 12 seed ever to win the uh, March Madness. So let's get right into it. And we have the first matchup, uh, and you'll see that we have Apple, the juggernaut, versus uh, American Airlines. And I specifically put American Airlines on here just because I wanted to be able to trash it. And Apple, the spiel, obviously they are the largest U.S. company. In the last quarter, they had $100 billion in revenue, and now they have outpaced Samsung as being the top smartphone provider uh, in the world, which is pretty impressive. And then you have American Airlines, which uh, which kind of sucks. In my mind, they are the worst airline. Uh, they spent more than 100% of their free cash flow in the past 10 years on stock buybacks, and they are just in a horrible spot overall. So for the first round, we're obviously going to be giving that to Apple. Apple moves on. Next, we have the 16 and the 17 seed. We have Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX, versus Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO. So for Netflix, you have the benefit of being the largest streaming service out there. And I've talked about how they've made this switch to creating their own content more recently and not having to rely on paying out licensing to other studios for content that they've created in the past. And I'll put up this graphic that I found right now about the percentage of households that just only have one streaming service. And when you're the juggernaut, when it comes to streaming, you have some competition with Disney when they have Hulu and uh, Disney Plus. Netflix is still the top dog there. And I love that they're creating their own content. And then you have Coca-Cola, which is a great blue chip stock to own. It's a dividend king, meaning they've raised their dividend for at least 50 straight years. And now they're at 59 straight years of raising that dividend, which is very impressive to see. So overall, I'm going to give this to Netflix because I'm looking at a company for a long-term investment. Coca-Cola is great. It gets stability, but I think Netflix is better. So Netflix will move on. Next, we're going to have the 8 versus a 25 matchup. We're going to have Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, versus Caterpillar, which is ticker symbol CAT. I'm going to give this to Walmart. Pretty easy to talk about. I'll put the revenue chart up right now. It's just, it's great overall. Caterpillar is great. It's a cyclical stock, meaning that does well when economic times are booming. A lot of projects for construction are in the works because... When interest rates are zero, people are more likely to take out loans to uh, work on their own house or create new buildings. And so Caterpillar is in a decent spot, but I'm going to give this one to Walmart. Next, we have the three versus the 24 seed with Disney versus Starbucks. I'm going to give this one to Disney. I love Disney because it is a recovery play, and it was really hurt by the, the lockdowns because of the, the park revenue. But they've been able to really step things up with their Disney+. Plus. They've announced all these new shows and series. You had WandaVision. That was a huge hit after they came out with Mandalorian. And I think Disney is a great spot. Uh, for a long-term investment. I've always been a fan of Starbucks, but it's hard to compete against Disney, so I'm going to give this one to Disney. Now we're going to have Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA, versus Target, which is ticker symbol TGT. I'm going to give this one to Alibaba. Alibaba is an e-commerce giant out of China, and I'll put up their revenue chart for the past couple years. You've seen explosive growth over the past couple years. You'd have the really interesting stuff about Jack Ma disappearing for a while, but coming back. Uh, but he's not as important to the operations as the stock price reflected. Uh, and so overall, I'm going to give the lead to Alibaba. Target's incredibly reliable for a retailer, but we want growth. We're looking to build wealth into the future. And you're going to be doing that with an Alibaba instead of a Target. Next, we're going to go with ExxonMobil versus McDonald's. Uh, ExxonMobil sucks. I hate Exxon. They've known about climate change for 40 plus years and didn't do anything about it. And McDonald's is one of the largest uh, real estate companies out there. Uh, if you're curious about that statement, do some research on it. It's pretty funny. So I'm going to give this one to McDonald's. Next up, we have a matchup of the Titans when it comes to Tesla and Zoom as being the top performers of 2020. And I'm going to give this one to Tesla because I think it's just in a great spot. And the fact that they have this ridiculous revenue outlook uh, is pretty impressive. They've seen explosive growth in the past couple years, uh, and the company expects that to continue. And Zoom, I think it'll be sticking around after the pandemic ends. I don't think it's going to be close to as popular as it was during the peak of the pandemic. I still do weekly Zoom calls with my friends, but besides that, I don't think it's going to be sticking around for that much longer. Next, we're going to have PayPal versus Boeing. PayPal has been the first stock I fell in love with, and Boeing was my top stock to buy for 2020. Then obviously we had the pandemic, which really hurt things in the airline industry, but I'm going to be putting PayPal in the lead. They're in a great spot with the 
digital transactions and the fact that they're allowing cryptocurrency transactions on their platform now, which has really helped the stock price boom in the past couple months. So PayPal is going to be moving on. Next, we have a two versus a 31 matchup with Microsoft versus Lululemon. And surprisingly, I'm actually going to be giving this one a Lululemon, which is the first big uh, upset of the bracket. The main reason is I'm a huge fan of Lululemon for the growth potential. They spent $500 million to acquire the startup Mirror, which I think is going to give them a lot of reoccurring revenue in the future. And they release earnings next week. And I'm very curious to see what the holiday sales were for the Mirror. So Microsoft is a fantastic company. I don't think you can argue otherwise. But I'm looking for massive growth. And I think Lulu is going to be outperforming Microsoft uh, in the upcoming years, even though Microsoft is much more reliable overall. Next up, we're gonna go with Nike versus Adobe. Two of my favorites, and I'm gonna give this one to Adobe just because of the recurring revenue. The fact that they have 96% profit margins uh, on their Adobe Creative Cloud is just so attractive. It's one of the most recent stocks that I've added in my portfolio, and I'll put that uh, above Nike. Next, we're gonna have Visa versus General Electric. I'm gonna give this one to General Electric because it is my top stock to buy of 2021. Visa is decent, it's very reliable, it's considered a recession-proof stock because People are still going to be spending money no matter what, but they did have an investigation open against them from the Department of Justice this morning. So the stock was down a little bit today, so I'm going to give this one to General Electric. Next up, we have NVIDIA versus Shopify. I, I'm going to pick NVIDIA just because their CEO went to Oregon State. Uh, and go beef. So NVIDIA moves on. Next, we're going to have the 3 versus the 30 matchup of Amazon versus Neo. Amazon has been one of the top performing stocks for the past decade plus, and I think if there's any other matchup, I would take Amazon. But I love Neo for a long-term investment because... They've recently come out with a new luxury car. They have the battery swap program, which I think is fascinating and is likely gonna to come to the US markets in the future. And I think it's just such an exciting place to look at for the EV market. And I think it's the top dog for growth potential. So Neo is going to be upsetting Amazon uh, in the three versus 30 matchup. Next, we're gonna have Verizon versus Salesforce. I'm gonna give it to Salesforce. Verizon's fine. It's a pretty decent dividend play, but if we're looking for growth, the CRM market's expected to grow at a 17% annual growth rate. Uh, and so I'm going to be taking CRM as the winner there. Now we have JP Morgan versus Airbnb. I'm a big fan of JP Morgan. It's my top financial stock to buy overall. Airbnb is a recent IPO, and I think it has a lot of risk behind it. So I'm going to be going with JPM uh, for the win here. And then the final matchup of the first round, we have Home Depot versus Costco. Uh, Home Depot is a very boring stock. It's a cyclical stock. And usually you see the economic cycles happen earlier with Home Depot compared to the overall market because it is very reliant on economic success. And so I'm going to be taking Costco. Costco is great. So now we're to the top 16. The first matchup of the second round, we're going to be having Apple versus Netflix. And I'm going to be taking Apple. It's hard to argue about Apple. They've seen incredible growth over the past decade. They're the largest U.S. company. And while Netflix has been really impressing me recently, I think Apple is a great buy for a long-term investment. And it is a part of my portfolio. Next, we're going to have Walmart versus Disney. I'm going to be taking Disney just because I think it's a great recovery play. And the fact that they've been so impressive with the amount of content that they're releasing for Disney+. Plus. I think it's very attractive for a long-term investment, and that's why the stock price has climbed, even though a lot of the revenue that you would normally see from Disney because of the park revenue hasn't been there. So a lot of the optimism and the speculative nature of Disney, which is not something you would have said five years ago, has really been pushing the, the optimism about the company going forward, so Disney will move on there. Then we have Alibaba versus McDonald's. I'm going to go with Alibaba because I think it's a better growth play. I think you have the, the e-commerce space in China, which just has so much potential, and they keep expanding further and further. McDonald's is a great reliable play, but if we're looking for a, a single stock to add to my portfolio, Alibaba is going to take the lead over McDonald's. So Alibaba moves on. Now we have a tough matchup between Tesla and PayPal. These are two companies that I've loved in the past, and I'm actually going to be taking PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL, over Tesla. Tesla is decently overextended at this point, and we've been seeing some recent sell-offs. And PayPal just keeps chugging along. And obviously, it's fallen from its all-time highs. But I think for the long term, PayPal is in a great spot. And it's a little bit more reliable uh, and less hype-driven than a Tesla. I love Tesla overall. Don't be mad at me for saying that in the comments section down below. Next up, we're going to be having Lululemon versus Adobe. These are two stocks that I absolutely love. And I'm going to be giving the lead towards Lululemon, which is interesting because I just bought Adobe. And I don't own shares of Lululemon yet. But Lululemon with the mirror. Love the growth potential with the mirror going forward. Next up, we're going to have General Electric versus NVIDIA, which is so tough because I love General Electric. It's my top stock to buy for 2021 and NVIDIA because the CEO went to Oregon State. But I'm going to be giving this to General Electric because I do think it is the best buy for 2021. Next up, we're going to be having NEO versus Salesforce, which is ticker symbol CRM. I'm going to be taking NEO. I think it's the best EV stock out there. And I'm a little worried about uh, CRM based off of the partnership between Adobe and Microsoft to create an AI-driven CRM product. Next up, we're going to be having JP Morgan versus Costco. I'm going to give this to Costco. JP Morgan's decent, but I don't love the idea of investing in financials. When everyone's watching so keenly on the 10-year the treasury yield, 
uh, and just the interest rates and inflation. And that seems like a lot of risk to be invested in. So I'm going to be going with Costco there. Now we go up to the, the top eight. We have Apple versus Disney, two juggernauts when it comes to U.S. companies. And I'm going to give this one to Apple. I think it just has fantastic growth opportunities. It was up like 80% in 2020, and I see that growth potential uh, increasing into the future. Next up, we have Alibaba versus PayPal. I do like Alibaba, but I just don't love investing in Chinese companies right now. There's a lot of risk based off of uh, the tariff history that we've had between the U.S. and China. So I'm going to be giving this one to PayPal also because I love PayPal uh, and Venmo as a product. Next, we have Lululemon versus General Electric, two companies that I've been very bullish on in the past couple months. Uh, and I'm going to give this one to General Electric just because I think it's my top stock to buy. It's a great recovery play. They're talking about reducing their debt by 35% in the upcoming three years. And I love the recent uh, news events that came out that kind of spooked the market. I bought the dip. And if you missed that video, I'll link it above right now. Then we have Neo versus uh, Costco. I think this one is a pretty easy one to determine. Uh, Costco got the dream ride through the first couple rounds, but this ends now with Neo. Uh, Neo, just an EV play, has been falling from its all time highs, and I see it as being a decent buying opportunity right now. So Neo will make it into the final four. And in the final four, we have Apple, PayPal, General Electric, and Neo. In the first matchup of the final four, we have Apple versus PayPal. It's a really tough matchup. You have the long term stability of Apple versus the growth potential of a PayPal. And I'm going to give this one to PayPal because I think it has better growth opportunities in the future, and the fact that they've been expanding into crypto is very exciting for the long-term potential of the company. So it's a close one, but I'm going to give this one to PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. And then you have General Electric versus NEO. You have a very well-established company at General Electric versus the new upcoming startup, which has really impressed Wall Street in the past year. But I'm going to give this one to General Electric. Uh, I think NEO is great, but it does have the risk of it being pretty overextended in the past year. And I think General Electric is in a great spot for a long-term investment. And then in the finals, you have PayPal versus General Electric. These are two of my favorite stocks, probably my favorite stock of 2018 versus my favorite stock of 2021. And surprisingly, I'm actually going to give this one to PayPal. I think if I had to buy one stock and have it be my ride or die for the next like five plus years, I think PayPal is going to have better returns than GE overall. But I love GE for a long-term investment for various reasons because I can sell covered calls unless I go through the stock split like they've been talking about. But I think PayPal is just in a great spot and it's one of my favorite stocks since the entire time I've been involved with the overall stock market. Very curious to hear what you guys have to say about my overall bracket and which stock you would put as your top stock to buy for 2021. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate all the support. And you guys heard it here first. Oregon State Beavers are going to be winning the NCAA tournament. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.